as we think started coming to we move on <clears throat> this morning as our custom is wherever you are if you're in, you know it's in a noisy place let's just open or mute our mic and just pray let's stir up our hearts in prayer let's pray let's prepare our hearts let's thank the lord for what he has started and let's thank him ahead for the word is sending in the name of jesus Mandala Boko Shekete Adabasun Tarabari Kiria Bashar Tayabari Bubosun Tayabush Kalebosari Bububosun Tayabari Kiria Basan Tayaba Lekiri Bosun Taye Kiria Basun Yababari Kiria Basun Yababa Ma Kiri Bubosun Yababari Kiria Bashar Tayaba Mahari Bosun Yababa Ma Kiri Bosun Taye Kiria Basun Tayaba Leketere Bosha Mari <laughs> I know so, um, we don't, well, because of press of time, however, can I take at least one testimony, any testimony from um, since when Faith for Purpose started, um, a Faith for Purpose related testimony? anyone any of the days anything that you feel the lord has done for you any thing for the lord i liked it to you i could just take one before i hand over the mic to pastor bc i'm really excited about um having pastor bc on the call because of i believe what god is said to do in our midst um i always tease her that she's so anointed in fact the lord used her to kickstart me on the process in 2019 um <clears throat> You know, there are people that will come talk about God, money, your purpose, and all of those things. And sometimes you feel like you are left miserable. No, 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 Pastor B. It's just a grace. Every time she speaks to you, like God empowers you to begin to take the right steps. The Lord gives you grace to so start from where you are. I heard a message she preached in September, I guess, at the end of August. I was in September. Um, and honestly, that was such a powerful word. And I believe that God has anointed her. You know, she's an amazing, amazing woman of God. Um, great experience in investment, real estate, and the likes. When death was in a very bad place. After that time, Pastor Bisu came, there was an equipping, there, were, there was wisdom. The woman took to practice certain things she was taught. To the glory of God, the next, by the next year, she was already out of debt. God has really helped her with her business. And also, this is not just a morning of just words, it's a morning of importation. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Oh, I didn't get any hand here for testimony, so we'll just move on. With Jesus' joy, can we welcome and celebrate my sister? I love her so much. Even when the Lord, another testimony, I, hope, I don't know if you get to it, when the Lord led her to take a new job working as now pastors, that she left a very high-flying job and all of that because the Lord moved her. Uh, it, has not, it has not reduced her influence or her financial blessing, even though it might look like a pickle. What am I saying? With her life, you see that it's not the job that make it rich and add no sorrow. It's the blessing of the Lord and his wisdom and principles that you put to practice. Can we celebrate and welcome Pastor Bisoye Okoli with joy, with all the smileys and emojis? Can we just put our hands together and welcome to her? <laughs> <laughs> 
and welcome her. Over to you, Mama. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning. morning. You're looking Thank you. good. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so grateful. You know, I love you. That is not in context. Contest. I absolutely love you, Pastor Missy. I'm thankful to God for what he's doing through you. I'm always excited when I hear you minister or hear that you're going somewhere to minister and establish God's purpose. I'm excited I get to do life with you. Um, I get to call you anytime I like. I'm just excited to have you as part of my life, and I'm so thankful. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I love you. I love Bishop a lot. Love you too. <laughs> A lot, and I'm so happy. I'm happy to be here today. I'm happy to be a part of IRA. I'm happy about what God is doing here, the awesome testimony. Sometimes I just sneak to your page online and just see what's happening, and I'm like, God, thank you. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Um, good morning, everyone. If you don't mind, I would share my slide. Okay. Um, so today we're going to be talking about mindset. Um, when Pastor Missy called me, I was like, okay, God, what should we talk about? Um, and then this is what um, he dropped in my heart. And why, why do I speak about mindset? Um, your mindset informs your belief. Your beliefs inform your habits. Your habits determine the course of your life. The things that you do every day determine the outcome of your life. There's a popular saying that the definition of foolishness is doing the same thing all over again and expecting the same results. So when it comes to making a change in any area, the first thing you want to check, if you visit the psychologist, one of the things they try to do is they try to inquire and probe into your mind and find out how you got to where you are. Because um, if you don't know where you are, you can't know where you need to go next. So when it comes to money, you want to first know, okay, so where am I in my mind first? Not where am I just financially, that's your net worth. And that's easy. Any numbers person can do that for you. You just do, if you want to know your net worth, your total assets, and I mean, your total liability. Assets is everything that you own. You're not paying a debt on. You don't have um, a loan on. Minus all your liability. Everything that takes money away from you. And you know your net worth. But it's not as easy to know your mind worth, right? Because it's not, it's not quantifiable. And that's what we're going to be starting with, our mindset this morning. A lot of things inform our mindset, your environment, your experiences, your company, the people that you keep. All of those come together to influence your mindset. And if you don't pay attention to this, you'll just be wondering, have you ever, um, have you ever been around a company for a long time? Um, and then so one time you're speaking and you're using the person's legal, you know, like, I don't as I miss it, say certain things. Okay, one of the things that I picked from her, um, she said, dream with God. Do you get what I mean? I don't know if there's anyone, if you've experienced it, let us know. Like, you just, you are with someone and then when you leave that person, you say a certain word and you're just like, oh no, that's Pastor ABC. That's not me. That's my friend. That's not me, right? So what happens is when you are in someone's company, they more, it's not conscious, it's unconscious, but they influence the way you speak. They influence the way you do things. Um, I remember someone was saying that, oh, I wanted to work for this person. I said, hey, yeah, Pastor, go with Pastor this way. Say. I'm not even there. I had no idea what she's about to do, but there's just that there's, she's conscious. Her mind, as subconscious, has picked the fact that, okay, this is conditioning me. So whether the person is there or not, it's conditioning your actions and it's determining the cost of our lives and that's why our mindset is absolutely important and that's why the bible goes ahead to say guard your heart now when you hear heart in the bible oftentimes is used interchangeably with mind when he says guard your heart with all diligence he says for out of it springs the cost of your life i know that the message translation says it is from there that your life begins from your heart, the things that you feed, and there are various gateways to the heart, right? This is not even part of what I point. But there are various gateways to the heart, what you hear, what you see. So you have to guard it, guard your company. Everywhere is permissible, but not everywhere is expedient for you. You are in a place, the Holy Spirit will nod, you'll be like, oh, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. Maybe someone here needs to check their company. It's not that bad, it's okay, it's okay. Right? 
But that's, those are those the things that end up feeding your mind. You're in that country. Let's keep God aside right now. Let me just, let's just, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not a part of them. You know, they're just my casual friends, but all of those are coming to feed our minds, right? So if you see the, the slide I have, the entirety of your mind, it has the things that you observe, your memories, the stories that you tell yourself, your habits, your thoughts, all of this go, goes ahead to influence your mind. So if you can check your mindset, and actually research has proven that managing your finance adequately is 80%. It's amazing the numbers. 80% your mindset and 20% your knowledge. 20% the knowledge that you have that you put to practice, but 80% of what the outcome of your life is financially has to do with your mindset. So what is mindset? Mindset are those unique set of beliefs that influence your habit or your attitude towards money. Proverbs 23, 7 says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Those things that influence your habit towards money. What makes you save? What has conditioned your saving? Well, oh, because I don't want to be poor. Because whatever, whatever that is. What makes you spend? Why do you spend? What are the things that you spend money on? Uh, one of my friends would say, if I get your, your bank account statement, I can tell you the state of your heart, right? Because the Bible says that wherever a man's treasure is, that's where his heart will be. Well, how do you give? What makes you give? That is all your mindset. How do you handle money? All of that is your mindset. And the interesting thing is, you cannot rise above the level of mindset. So if you want to rise higher financially, you first have to change your mind. Actually, research has proven that most people that win the lottery end up squandering it. The reason they do that is because they are not mentally prepared for the wealth they are coming to. So before, and I read in the Bible where God's um, prophet says that God will not cast his spells before swines. So what he would do is he would change your mind first. When you can, and that's why God would tell Abraham, he would say, Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, you've not touched it tangibly yet. And that's what faith is. The substance of things of for, the evidence of that which is unseen, is unseen, not unreal. Is unseen, not unreal, not impossible. So you can't see it physically yet, but your mind can comprehend it. And because your mind can comprehend it, it's just a matter of time. The physical will catch up with the spiritual. The spiritual does not catch up with the physical. It's the physical that will catch up with the spiritual. So God will over over the face of the sea and he will see, he will see light, he will see man, and he will say, let that be. And when he says, let there be, what he has said will come to pass, but he will see it first. So God will come to Abraham and say, you don't have a child yet, but can you see the stars? Can you number them? Because once you can see your child in the stars, then the physical will catch up with the spiritual. You might not have money right now. Um, there's something that God had told me earlier that I used to say. One of my money mantra used to be, money is not my problem, it's how to spend it. Trust me, when I was saying money is not my problem, money was my problem. I used to wear my sister's clothes to church. and run off before she comes back from church because I was wearing a shoe. And one, it was so bad in children's church. One of my friends had to ask me, so is it the only shoe that you have? Um, and I just smiled because I couldn't even say that that one that I was even wearing was not mine. But I knew that there was more. And after a while, what I saw in my mind, the physical caught up with it. And you know, Right now, sometimes when I open my wardrobe and I'm like, oh, I need to declutter and I ask people to come pack clothes and I'm like, wow. Now the physical has caught up with what I see. When I travel and I shop for people and I'm like, oh, this is a gift for this person. I'm like, yeah, the physical has caught up with what I see. But it started first with my mind, right? So when you, when you have the mindsets, right? There are two sets of mindsets. You have the healthy ones and you have the unhealthy ones. So we'll start with the healthy ones first. Now, one of the character, these are some of the characteristics of a healthy mindset. First of all, a healthy mindset is grateful. You might not have everything. I'm going to go to what money is because that was another misconception that the Holy Spirit impressed on my heart to clear this morning. You might not have everything, but you are grateful for what you have because you understand that 
it might look like a small hand in the cloud, but if it's <clears throat> like Elijah, if it's a handful, then there's the sound of the abundance of rain. So you you might look at everything and be like, it's just small. There's a the sound of the abundance of rain. You might look in your household and all you have is small oil and bread, but you are grateful for it. You are thankful for what you have. That's a healthy mindset. You don't let your present condition define you. You don't let them define God to you. Your mind is, you are thankful, you are grateful. Grateful for what you have, however big, however small it is. It is not, and that's, we'll see that in the attribute of Jesus. When he had taken the disciples um, and they, he had taught for a long time and he said, oh, these people must be hungry. He said, what do we have? He said, Jesus is small. Mindset. Just looking at the physical. Jesus is small. Jesus said, what do you have? Andrew said, five loaves of bread and two fishes. Jesus said, is enough. And what did he do? He took it. And Bible says, he gave thanks. That's a healthy mindset. It might not in the natural look like enough, but you are willing and able at all times to give thanks. And that's why the Bible commands us, in all things, give thanks. Why? Thanksgiving is the hand that is able to receive more. Has anybody ever, if you've gone to this kind of party, please put it in the chat. You've ever gone to a party and they are spraying you, uh, Pastor, missy, 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 missy. And you just be spraying money, spraying money. And after that, you have to remind yourself, common sense has to come back and say, no, that's enough. I'm not spending your transport fee. What those people are doing is they know that the more they keep hyping you, you will spend and overspend that which you did not intend to spend. That's the power of gratitude. They will just continue to hype, continue to call your name. As they're calling your name like this, you just big spender, right? That's the power. So one of the healthy mind, and that's something that we need to cultivate to get into a wealthy place. Cultivate a healthy mindset of being grateful at all times for all things, all things. Not the big things, all things. Not the big things, let me reiterate, all things. Not the big things, all things. Even inadequate, yes, all things. Bible says, in all things, give things. Another healthy mindset that um, people cultivate, that you have to cultivate, is being disciplined. Being disciplined with how you spend, being disciplined with how you say, why do you have to be disciplined? Bible says that it is well, found worthy of stewards to be faithful. You know that the money you have is not yours. You were given by God. So you are disciplined with how you disburse the money. Another healthy mindset, you know, I have to look at the time, is being generous. The concept of, you know, the more you amass, the more you have, is for the world, it's not for the scriptures. Because in these scriptures, you spread your bread upon many waters. And that's how it goes. So having a generous mindset. There's a lovely book, you see it in the slide, that Pastor not Yemisi gave me at a point. It's called um, Generosity Bit. Bit. You give. Don't just give the barest minimum. Um, one of the things that helped me with my finances was giving. Um, I share this testimony every time. I remember one time that God told me to clear my account. And I was like, wow, this God must be on a joking stove. Like, clear my account. Um, but I attend a church where we have been taught to obey. So I did. And ladies and gentlemen, you know when they say God owes no man, God owes no man. And what I tell people is, and I'm telling you on this call is, test and see that the Lord is good. I'm not saying go clear your account. I'm saying that if God has given you an instruction as regards your finances, don't let a limiting mindset stop you from obeying. I say, if I give, I will not have enough. If you keep, you will not have enough. Because the Bible says that money will grow wings and fly away. So you develop a generous mindset. People that have a healthy mindset are responsible with money. They are responsible with how they handle the resources that God has committed to them. They are very teachable. They're willing to learn. One of the things I've discovered, you know, coaching people with finances is people will be like, oh, I want to have money. I want to, I want you to coach me. And then you send the person an information and like maybe five months later, they say, ah, Pastor Bishop, is this still open? I'm like, yeah. That's why Paul encouraged us in Ephesians. He says, redeeming the time. Time in that, in that scripture is called carries, precious moment, prophetic moment. Does not come all the time. Comes once in a while sometimes. We have to be able to redeem it. So people that have healthy mindset, they're able to redeem it. They're teachable. They understand how to seize such times, such moments. They avoid comparison. 
So you're not looking at your friend. One of the things that I've gotten people into financial problems is comparison. So my friend is doing MMM, I want to do it. Might not be the right thing for you. My friend is buying this, I want to do it. Might not be the right thing for you. So these are some of the um, characteristics of healthy mindset. You avoid competition, you're teachable, you're responsible, you're generous, you're disciplined because you know you're a steward and you're grateful, ever grateful. So let's look at some of the unhealthy mindsets that we have, right? Um, some of the unhealthy mindset that, you know, easy to have, number one, is being ungrateful. You always complain about everything. It's like the children of Israel. Oh, you brought a lot of Egypt to come and kill us. God, it's not enough. I've given you everything. And you complain and complain and complain. And heaven does not heed to complain. Heaven is to the voice of it is written. Not the voice of it is, com it is complaining. It is, it is written. So unhealthy mindset, you're very ungrateful. It's not enough. You are insatiable. It's not enough. Ah, come and give. Ah, my salary is not enough. It's not enough. That's your middle name. Uh, there's, there's a place, I was telling one of my friends earlier this year that, you know, there's a particular company that we keep that every time it comes, you know, there's money we need to contribute money. So I, I don't have, I don't have. Like, you better change it. This, you have to get to that point where it's no longer I don't have. So people with unhealthy minds, you're very insatiable. I don't have. Come and give. Ah, I don't have. Let's do, mm -mm, I don't have. You go out with the girls, you, I can't pay the bills because I don't have. But when they pay the bills, you eat, you eat part of the food. Someone with an unhealthy mindset complains a lot, complains about everything. God more, God more, not God. You know, there's a time I was my God was like, have you come to my present to ask me what I want, not just you coming with your list? And then they complain, they complain a lot, very indisciplined with money, very indisciplined with money, they're very irresponsible with the resources that God has given them. They're very corrupt. People with an healthy mindset will do about anything to make money, regardless of what the outcomes are. So I'm trying to run now so that I can finish up. Um, so now how do we cultivate this unhealthy mindset? So these are some of the things that inform unhealthy mindset, right? Um, aside from being indisciplined, corrupt, insatiable, ungrateful, you hear people say, they're grateful people, but you hear things like, I'm bad at math. I'm not very good at math. I'm not good with money. I'm, I'm terrible at money. That's not true. The Bible says you can do all things. Why am I bringing some of this? These are some of the things that we have told ourselves over time that has informed where we are. I'm not a business person. I'm not entrepreneurial minded. Says who? The, the father that creates you, give you that script. Or those are the scripts that you've told yourself. I'm not good at selling. I'm not good at, I'm not good at all those negative things that we say to ourselves sometimes or comes to our mind. So I'm bad at math. I'm not good with money. I don't have enough to give. When they call an offering, I know it's not for people like me. When I, when I make money, then I will give. When I make money, I hear this, I will save. When I make money, I would invest. The truth is tomorrow will never come if you keep procrastinating as such. I hear people say money is the root of all evil. Wrongly quoted scriptures is the love of money, not money is the root of all evil. I hear people say, Oh, I'll just invest in my children, my children are my retirement plan. Not true, especially not with the children of nowadays, right? You don't want to make them your retirement plan. You want to, and the Bible actually says that a wise man will leave an inheritance for his children's children, not the other way around. So I we need to check how we interpret scriptures. People that say, oh, I can do anything to be rich. I will know, I'll just do anything to make money. So these are some of the things that we say that are conditioning our mind. I've heard people say, oh, I'll just marry a rich person. This is for the ladies. I don't think guys go out here to say they will just marry, marry a rich person. If there's any guy that said that, well, maybe Pastor Missy needs to have a chat with the person. So all of those goes ahead. Now, sometimes these things, those words, those thoughts, those behaviors are not conscious. They are things that we have picked and then we have made them ours. And unconsciously so, those things end up influencing or conditioning our mind. They chat the way we think. And as they chat the way you think, they chat the way you act. As they chat the way you act, they determine the course of your life. Proverbs 22 verse two says, the rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. Why did I put the scripture here? I love that it says that the Lord made them both, not the Lord made them so. The rich and the poor 
have this in common. The Lord made them both. Not the Lord made them so. Their thoughts, their environment, their experiences make them so. Another scripture I love in the, in the, um, that I love says that the poor you will have with you always. So I tell people, if the Bible says that the poor you will have with you always, it means that poverty is an office. Somebody must feel it. Now, the question of who feels it is not the Lord that made them to feel it. It's that their actions, their thoughts, their mindset, the things that they expose themselves to make them feel that position. The Lord made both the rich and the poor, but he does not make them so. So it is not the desire of God that you are in poverty. It is that poverty is an office. Somebody must feel it. The decision of who feels it is your responsibility, not God's. Because the Bible says that all that pertains to life and godliness God has already given you is your responsibility to make use of it. Um, Psalm 23 says, it sets a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You can choose to sit at that table and not eat and be looking at your enemy. And you can choose to get on that table and regardless of your enemy eats, God's responsibility is to set the table before you. Your responsibility is to eat what has been set before you. That's why God will show up and say, Peter, kill and eat. He says it's unclean. He says, don't call what I call unclean, unclean. It's Peter's responsibility to kill and eat. God's responsibility is to provide. So God has provided every believer all that we need. But, and I told myself, I said, it would be a misnomer to get to heaven. And God will not tell you, you know, I created you with jet in your future. And I'm like, what? And the best I did was maybe an SUV. Or you get to heaven, God will be like, you know, the nations was in your future. And the best that you did was Nigeria. Or we got to heaven and God will tell you, you know, millions. I created you for crusades and millions. And the best you did was home fellowship. And that's why I love that Pastor Emis is saying, you have to dream of God. We're going to get there. Don't let me preempt myself. Holy Spirit, help me. I think I'm getting excited. So the Lord makes them both, not makes them so. The responsibility of what you become is yours. God has given you that creative ability. And that's why God said, let us make man in our own image. Let him be creative like us. Let him be able to do things like us. That's why when Jesus was going to go, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now I delegate them to you. You have authority. You have power. What you do with that is yours. It's not God. So it's not God that makes any believer rich or poor. Because what I realize is you can be a praying magnet and be poor. You can take territories for God and be poor. And it will not be the desire of God that you take territories and be poor. It will be that you have not made the decision to enter into the wealthy places that God has ordained for you. And my prayer is that everyone on this call will enter into the wealthy place that God has called you to in the name of Jesus. We will break free of every limiting mindset. We will break free of every limiting habit and character and enter into the fullness of the blessings that God has ordained for us in the name of Jesus. Nothing will hold you back. Pastor Missy did not call this call by accident. She didn't, God did not ask her to make this call by accident. It is intentional. There are no mistakes with God. So this is like a curious moment. And I'm praying to God that you will seize the moment and say, God, no, no more just enough. I'm entering into a season of more than enough. I'm entering into my wealthy place. I'm becoming a kingdom financier. In the name of Jesus, these possibilities are in God. The IRA will say they want to organize a program. And you say, Pastor, you need to be all sponsored by me. Because God can get you there. But God will not get you there if your mindset is not right. He knows that if he gives you the wealth, you will not use it for the purpose that he wants you to. Then it will be difficult for him to give it to you. And you know the beautiful thing about we really partnering with God to fund this ministry? Have you ever poured water through a hose? And when you finish pouring that water, the hose was dry. If you've ever done that, please just indicate in the chat. We need to understand the mystery with which you pass the water. 
that you pass a water through a pipe or a hose. And when you finish passing the water, you touch the pipe and every drop of the water came out. The pipe is dry. I don't know if anybody has ever experienced it. It's absolutely impossible for that to happen. So there is no way you can partner with God to become a kingdom financier that you will not be wet. wet. It's absolutely impossible. You yourself will be wet. But it's your decision to say, God, I'm partnering with you. And as you, God connects you to his source and you become the conduit to which God fulfills his agenda and mandates on earth financially, you will be wet. Ladies and gentlemen, the poor and the rich have this in common. God made them both. God did not make them so. They make themselves so. And my prayer is that there will be a making this morning in the name of Jesus. So what do you do? How does this work? Your mindset. Now, before I come here, let me go forward a little bit. It comes with your thoughts first. So most of these things start as thoughts. Even if you've heard it, your friend said it. Ah, you know, all these church, church people, they'll just come and be saying, give, give, give. Tight is not even in the Bible. I tell people that, you know, I wish I'm looking forward to the day I have a conversation with Daddy Fritz. I know fighting is not in the New Testament, but do you know that the responsibility of the New Testament is worse than fighting? As a matter of fact, in the Old Testament, that 10% was the minimum because you're supposed to give a tithe. You're supposed to set aside something for the poor. You're supposed to set aside something for the priests. So when you calculate all of that, first of all, it's more than 10%. And then when you come into the New Testament, in Acts 4, the era of the church, Scripture says that they sold all that they had. I'm not sure you have sold your land. It was so interesting that Ananias and Sapphira sold their property and they came to lie to the apostle. As scripture said, the apostle told them, you have not lied to us. You have lied to the spirit of God. So it means that the spirit of God was involved in their giving. So before you begin to contest the 10% that you are giving in the church, the church in Acts of the Apostle sold everything. I have a testimony of a lady in church, and I love to give her testimony. You know, when she went for IT, she was a, a she was studying microbiology. She went for IT, and then she came back and told me, oh, that all the money they paid her during IT, she was going to give it to church. And I'm like, okay. I paid my account, you know, before that for church to work. That's the first time I was hearing somebody else say that to me. And I'm like, oh, wow. And she did clear account. She was supposed to use the money to buy a camera to start a photography business. Ladies and gentlemen, if you mention top 10 in Nigeria, you mention Posh Lake. She's doing amazing. But it started with the seed. That this money that I'm supposed to use to buy a camera, I will first give it to God. And when you give to God, it gives back to you good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. That's how God gives to you. So sometimes it starts with the thoughts. People begin to say things around you. Ah, all the church people, they like to collect money too much. So you don't want to be like church. And it is interesting, like we read the Bible in portion. So you don't want to give like the church in Acts of the Apostle, but you want to display power like the church in Apostle. I think I, I'm amazing that God is not a human being, right? It's God all by himself. Because God, the power came upon them. The power is only for miracle. You don't want to use power for giving. You have to take the scripture in its entirety. Bible said that they gave all that they had. They gave so much that none had need amongst them. And the one person that tried to lie about giving, it was not the apostle that prayed that you would drop dead for lying. The spirit of God checked him. And they said, it was yours to give. We didn't tell you how much to give. So in this dispensation, you don't, the church does not tell you how much to give. You give as led by the spirit of God. But most often than not, the spirit of God will ask you for more than 10%. So let's not argue 10%, but let's come back. So it comes, it starts with the thought. Someone says something around you in your environment and then it comes into your mind as a thought. And if you allow that thought, you think about it, you affirm the thought a little bit, then it becomes a belief. When it becomes a belief, that's when it becomes a struggle. And oftentimes that's when we have an issue, you know, breaking it because we've allowed the thought to, that's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, because from there springs the issues of life. Guard the things that your ears hear. Guard the things that your eyes see. Guard the things that your mind comprehends. You know, in my church, it's a year of the Holy Ghost. And if, if there's something that um, pastor has been praying for us, the book of Proverbs says that 
hearing ear and seeing eyes, the Lord made them both. And that's what our pastor has been praying, that we will hear what God wants us to hear and we will see what God wants us to see. Because those two gateways in particular, they feed your mind. And as you allow it to fester in your mind, you reaffirm it, it becomes a belief. When it becomes a belief, it determines the cost of your life. So as I was preparing, this is something that God impressed in my heart to share with us. There are different kinds of money. Oftentimes we look at money mindset just in terms of cash. And cash is just one of the elements of money. It's not the entirety of money. So we just look at some of this scripture. First, let me see if my time is up. Please tell me because we can be on the roll. So John 3 verses 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So that's the plan of God. He creates both the rich, and, the rich and the poor. He wishes that we prosper. But currency, cash, investment is just one aspect of money. Another aspect of money is credibility that I see that sometimes Christians don't pay attention to, right? Credibility, your name, your integrity, your reputation. That will say, okay, that Proverbs 22 verse one says that a good name is better than silver. So your name, your integrity, your reputation. I remember Pastor Blessing, I wish that was saying that, a, a child was saying that if there's something that their mom told them, she said, I may never leave you money, but I will leave you a good name. Leave a good name. Don't just, when it comes to your mindset, don't just focus on cash, focus on your name, your integrity, your reputation. When you say good morning, do people go outside and open the curtain to check? Or can they take your word to the back? A good name is better than silver. Another, another um, currency is your company. The Bible says in Proverbs 32, 20, it says he that works with the wives with the wives. Check your relationship. It influences your mindset, your relationship, your network, the tr your network. The truth is your network is as important as your net worth. Your net worth is cash. That's your investment and your asset. I defined it at the beginning of this session. But your net worth is also as important. There are some people that they will not have. I, okay, let me give you a typical example. So on Thursday, in showers in my church, um, pastor came to church. Tino pastor came to church and then I think he forgot to bring offering. So during offering, he was like, oh my God, I didn't bring offering. Oh, I'm not going to give today. People were looking for money in their post. Somebody ran out and offered them money. As a person, I learned that they were a few, you know, to give him money. What is that? It's network. You might not have the physical cash, but if you have a solid network, money will never be a problem. So please, as you work on your cash, ensure that you also check your network. Another thing you want to understand that is money is your competency. What are you good at? What is your skill set? Your competency is money. So please ensure that you develop yourself. You develop yourself when it comes to your money. Another skill, another money that you need to work on is your character. Character is money. And these are all scriptures that, you know, we can look at. Character is money. What's your unique selling? But what's different about Yes, remember, as the mountain so is it. Comes your mindset, and it forms your attitude, it forms your habits, determines the cost of your life. So how do we play on healthy mindset? How do we play on healthy mindset? The first thing you want to do is reframe your mind to an empowering belief. All those I'm not good at, I'm bad at, God is not enough, God I want more, I can't give you, if I give you it will not be enough, I can't, I will. Reframe it to I am. I am wealthy. I am a kingdom financier. I have more than enough. Second Corinthians 9, 8. I have all that I need. All grace abounds towards me. You can write it down. Paste it on your wall where you can see. I am a kingdom financier. I am wealthy. I have more than enough. I live in abundance. Paste it where you can see because as far as your eyes can see, you keep saying this to yourself again. So you reframe your mind. 
say it over and over. I'm wealthy. There's no money in your pocket. I'm wealthy. I remember one time I used to tell my friend, to put it in the pocket of time. This money, you will finance kingdom. Those things have become a reality now. So change, reframe your mind. Begin to form empowering beliefs. I'm wealthy. I'm healthy. I'm financially buoyant. I give to the cause of the kingdom. Whatever it is, let God frame it for you and then put it where you can see and say it over and over again to yourself. You know, Pastor Tywo, they call it self-talk. One time Pastor Tywo preached and he was explaining about a research that says that we speak to ourselves in a day a thousand times more than we speak to others. So say it over and over to yourself. Instead of allowing those thoughts of, ah, it's not enough, I don't have transfer fare, I don't have, I don't have, I have more than enough. I operate in abundance. Just say it over. Whatever those mindset that you need to begin to cultivate, begin to say it over and over to yourself. And as you say it, you see it. Because the kingdom we operate, we operate with our mouth, right? If you say to this mountain, you say to the mountain of poverty, I have more than enough. You say to the mountain of lack, I have more than enough. You say to the mountain, I have more than enough. The Bible says that if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it says that it will. So you first want to reframe your mind by saying, begin to confess empowering belief. The next thing you want to do is expose your mind beyond your frame of reference. The reason 10% is a problem is because that is your frame of reference. When you change your mind, and that's why my first exposure is the Bible. When you change your mind that the church in Acts of Apostle, they gave all, they sold and brought to the kingdom. When you change your frame of reference, you begin to operate in an abundance mindset. To change your frame, so you read the Bible, you read books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Generosity Bet. Bet. Thank you, Pastor Emisi, for giving me this book, amazing book. Millionaire Mindset, Psychology of Money, I tried to put in a Nigerian author, The Smart um, Money Woman. There are a lot of books, so read books. Attend seminars, attend conferences that speak about money and mindset so that you can begin to change how you see. You begin to see yourself as wealthy. You begin to see your business as successful. You begin to see yourself as excellent on your job. You change your frame of reference. And even when things external try to influence your reference, you keep it. That's what Daniel did. Daniel entered Babylon and they said, oh, in Babylon, this is how we do it. He said, no, 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 no. I have a frame of reference. He went to meet the, you know, he said, can you, can you allow me to keep my, my own frame of reference? I know that darkness may cover the earth and deep darkness the people go. Can I keep my frame of reference? The man said, you know what, go ahead. I'll check you in 10 days. If you are better than everyone, you keep at it. If you are worse, then you change. And what happened? Bible says Daniel was excellent. So the world around you might be arguing 10%, arguing money, arguing Nigeria economy. You keep your frame of reference. You know, the last couple of your people have been shouting Nigeria economy. I was sending a friend yesterday. I said, honestly, I don't operate in Nigeria economy. I don't know about you, but me, I'm not in Nigeria with you people. Bubu is not my president. He's my, the president of Nigeria, but my president is heaven. No. So I don't operate in Nigeria economy. I operate everyone's economy. Everyone's economy cannot be in recession. So if Nigeria is Nigerian, I don't understand it. If I need dollar, it comes. Whatever currency I need to spend, my father is rich in houses and land. That's how I see it. So change everything around you might be topsy topsy. You keep your frame of reference. My kingdom is heaven. There's no recession in heaven. The price of dollar does not affect heaven. When people are saying there's a casting down in heaven, there's a lifting up. You keep your frame of reference, you guard it. You guard your frame of reference and say, no, this is the kingdom I operate. People's businesses might be collapsing. No, my own business succeeds. You guard your frame of reference. There might be people laying people off their jobs. No, that's not my situation. You guard your frame of reference. But you have to know your frame of reference. So John, John says that you will be exactly the same person you are in the next year, years, except for the people you read, the people that you meet, sorry, and the books that you read. So catch your frame of reference. If your frame of reference is not good enough, then you expose yourself to a new frame of reference. And then when you find it, we obey scripture, you guard your heart, you guard that frame of reference. I say, no, this is the economy I operate. I always tell people, money is not my, no, if I need it, it comes. And as you guard it, it will begin to come. As you expose yourself to a new frame of reference, so give your, your, your brain, your mind, 
something new to grow with. Give it a chance to grow. Pick a new book, read. You know, this generosity bed, there's a story about someone that gives 90% of his income and lives on 10%. Think your frame of reference. When you read such things, you will now see that the 10% you're arguing with God said is chicken change. Got your frame of reference, right? Change how you think. I remember one time I was working with God in the evening. I was like, God, when I'm this age, I want to be giving you in this digit. When I get to this age, I want to start giving you in this digit. Because I just need, no, I, I can't be poor. And you cannot partner with God and be poor. It's not possible. So please expose yourself. Books, seminars, teachings, trainings, things that changes your frame of reference. Once you change your frame of reference, Remember, the spiritual governs the physical. After a while, your physical will catch up with the spiritual that you see. Dream with God. Dream with God. See through the lens. So when you have, when you gather these resources, you hear, you read, that changes your frame of reference, then begin to dream with God. Understand that this God, there is absolutely nothing that is impossible with him. They might say it has never happened in your lineage before. Excellent. Tell them. I'm the lineage breaker. You are the first. After all, the woman with the issue of blood had no frame of reference. She had never heard someone touch the arm of his garment, but she said, if I can, I will. That's self-talk. Bible said she said it over and over again to herself. And that's what we started with, self-talk. You talk to yourself. If I can, Jesus says I can, so I can. So she said to herself, even before she got the healing, if I can, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will. Nobody knew, but she said to herself. She did not even say to Jesus, Jesus, if I can touch you, I'll be healed. She thought to Jesus, said, oh, 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 a self-talk has drawn virtue out of me. But like, Jesus, what do you mean? People are already touching. You said, no, 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 no. When there, there is that touch that is different from the regular touch. She said, no, this one drew power. Why? She said it over and over to herself. She muttered it, said it over and over. If I can touch, then I will be healed. So dream with God. Whatever that dream is, let your imagination run wild. Keep no gap, keep no gap, no limit as to the things that God can do with you, for you, and through you. Let your imaginations be wild. Dream it big. It's never happened before. Yes, good. You know, I read a book by Ora Roberts. Ora Roberts. It says how to see the invisible and do the impossible. He said when God told him to go and build Ora Roberts University and, you know, acres of land, he didn't have the money, but God said it. He saw the huge building. So he said to tell the real estate agent, go and get me so, so, and so acres of land. We are building. The man said, sir, go and get you. He said, yes. Do you have the money? He said, no. He said, but I can see it. God has shown me the university with big buildings. Go and get me. Ladies and gentlemen, the realtor went to get the property, came back and told him the thousands of dollars that it would cost. He went back into his room and he said, God has said it. We are starting this building. Ladies and gentlemen, as he was in his house, someone knocked on his door. Knock, knock. He opened the door. The guy did not enter his house. The guy told him to his face. He said, all right, Robert, I don't like you. I don't like your ministry. I don't like what you stand for. But God told me to give you this money. Gave him a huge check that paid for the house. Ladies and gentlemen, they don't like to like you. They don't have to like you. They don't have to like your ministry. They don't have to like what your gods or what you stand for. But if you dream with God, God will wake men and women to make sure that that dream comes to pass. Mordecai will lose their sleep. I don't know who you are on this call. Some Mordecai will begin to lose their sleep just so that you can. Some kings will begin to lose their sleep just so that you can get the blessings that God has marked for you. So dream with God. Let your imagination run wild as to the things that God can do for you, the things that God can do with your business, the things that God can do for you in your finances, the things that God can do in your family, the things that God can do with your job, the things that God can do with your investments. Dream impossible with God. And when you dream it, mutter it over and over to yourself. Nobody has to like you. You don't have to have a pedigree. You don't have to have a, a point of reference. You don't have to have the family lineage or background that makes it possible. As a matter of fact, when it becomes impossible, that's when you will be excited because when it becomes impossible, it becomes God. Scripture says that with man, it might be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So if it's impossible, be excited. Now it's a God moment. 
and then God will step in. And we have references as to how God has stepped in for people when they can see, when they can dream with God. And the last thing you want to do is to check your company. Ladies and gentlemen, bad company will call up good man morals. You can be financially healthy in your mind, but if you walk with the wrong person, it's just a matter of time. You will begin to pick the things that they say. And I give a practical story. I believe in first fruit, right? Because I found it in scripture and I believe in taste and see that the Lord is good. So I've tested it and I've seen that the Lord is good. So one day I had a conversation with my colleague, we're talking about giving. And he was like, oh, for him, um, this is how he gives his first fruit. When he gets the income for the year, he removes his running expenses and then he gives the remaining. I was like, oh, wow, it's a very interesting concept because I used to give the entirety of the income for the month. I said, ah, no, not bad. Okay, so test and see. So that year, ladies and gentlemen, I removed my running expenses and I gave the remaining. You know when they say she saw Shege? Oh my God. That's all I can say about it. After that year's experience, the next year, I carried my first fruit. I obeyed the instruction of God. Now, why did I decide to follow my friend's style of giving? Company. He says, don't call it confederacy what they call it confederacy. All things are permissible. Not all things are expedient. Your friend might be giving 10%. If God calls you to 50, you obey God, not your friend. Culture might say, don't give at all. If God calls you to 100%, you obey God, not culture, because God trumps culture. So I try to do it my friend's way, and I've seen that my friend's way is not good. Now, the interesting thing is, my friend is not wrong, because he might be working for him. But the fact, and that's the thing about investment and savings. So you hear savings culture, 50, 30, 20. He might work for other people, might not be what is necessary for your growth. You hear people say, um, let's invest in real estate. It might not be what is necessary, but your investment might be kingdom investment. So you have to know what God is saying about you. You have to get wisdom from others, but you have to see that wisdom through the lens of God so that you will not see Shege the way I saw Shege that year. So ladies and gentlemen, check your company, check your mindset. And I pray that as we begin to change our frame of reference and begin to dream with God, and see things through the lens of God, that God will indeed bring us into that wealthy place that he has ordained us to. As we check our company, check our character, check our networks, check our credibility, God will bring us into that wealthy place that he has called us to in the name of Jesus. And as you change your mindset and God begins to open your hands to wealth, let God direct you as to how to invest, as to how to save. Don't just follow people, remember? Don't follow people. Allow God direct you, get knowledge, read books, attend seminars, and I pray that God will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Pastor Emisi, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, Pastor Emisi, you know, we'll continue tomorrow now. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Pastor we'll do investment tomorrow. Yes, we'll do investment. And I'm just so glad, you know, as we're speaking, it's what I said that God is pulling our edges. Because <laughs> it's funny, he says something about what is, I remember two, some years ago, three years or there, I asked the Lord, how do I make wealth? And he mm -hmm. told me something. I've been doing it, but the thing is not, it feels weird. I look at my like, this thing, and I no one wanted to want to do like what you said, somebody else's instruction, because just like, this kind of instruction, how does this make sense? It's not too close to. But every time I've tried to divert from it, it always comes back like, don't be foolish. And I just go back to what God has said. This is such a powerful, powerful, powerful eye opener. And we hear more tomorrow, but we're going to pray. Yes, I love what Sabu said. We're coming to God's frame of reference and we experience the impossible. That aura robust, there was something, there was this thought pattern that I, I, I say it in passing. The Lord just cautioned me as you're speaking, you know, about it. And I just had to repent. And I started changing what I was saying, what I was, it was a joke. It, it's like, it's real. I said, no, you can't rise above that. I want to invite us to pray before we go. I say, Father, expose every lie that I've embraced. I remember, and this is to encourage somebody, in that general bet, you can buy it. I remember when I found that book two years ago. I literally cleared it in Nigeria. If I buy Wonderland, they know. I literally cleared all that book in Nigeria. Like, 
giving it out, recommending it to people because I was weeping just reading that. As I saw that book, I think it was the year the Lord told me what he wanted me to do. I saw I was just weeping at the bookstore and I flipped the back. But I don't remember the story, Pastor Pistori. There was a man that God told me to stop giving to the ministry because it's encouraging waste. Because I, re- that's I realized that even to where you sow, there are a lot of generosity bets. Generosity bets. There are a couple of us that is out of affination, out of um, hype, out of ah, this place is, the, is a great thing to be. Ah, so I give to that. I do to that. I even express it big and when somebody wanted to give. There's a way people that want to even give to ministries or people to manipulate the situation, the Lord want the man to not give there anymore. That did I ask you to keep giving there? Don't because you're encouraging ways. Give it to the places where it is needed. Something like that. And from that moment, I realized that it's not just about knowing what to give. It's also knowing where to give. And I pray the Lord will give, help us in Jesus' name. Can we just omit our mic for one, two minutes and just begin to pray this morning? We'll receive the word in the name of Jesus. And as we say, we'll end by praying over us because as she just started, I just feel like staring in my heart. It was open. If where you are is not noisy, just omit your mic. And let us begin to pray. Please can you pray for us this morning as you're led, whatever the Lord or word the Lord plays on your heart. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time of fellowship together. We open our hearts like the psalmist says, that God, you set our hearts and you set our reins. If there is only limiting mindset, if there is any lie that we have embraced, Father, we ask that you expose them and that you erase them in the name of Jesus. And we ask, Lord God, that you open our minds and our hearts to new things. Open our hearts to begin to behold wondrous things out of your law in the name of Jesus. Scripture says that you set the solitude in family. Father, set us in the right company that will help us to develop the right frame of mind that you want for our finances in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to begin to comprehend that which you want us to as regards our finances in the name of Jesus. Open our ears and our minds to the instructions that you will give to us as regards our finances even in this season, in the name of Jesus. And Father, for those of us that you have instructed and we have disobeyed, God, we ask for mercy. For those of us that you have told how to use our finances and we have gone the other way, Father, we ask for your mercy. We pray that your mercy will prevail over us and we ask that as your mercy prevails uh, that you will give us the boldness uh, and the courage to begin to do that which you have called us to in the name of Jesus uh, we will not just listen to the hear Sarah Nese has uh, that for God our mind will be stayed on you uh, our eyes will be stayed on you uh, we will use our finances as good stewards uh, of that which you have committed to us in the name of Jesus uh, our finances will bring you glory our businesses will bring you glory our money will bring you glory in the name of Jesus and Father thank you that you will bless our hands and cause us to enter into wealth in the mighty name of Jesus we ask God that you will bless our hands and you will make us kingdom financiers Father those of us that have made made up our minds to partner with you we receive grace we receive grace to be kingdom financiers we receive grace to fund your agenda and your purpose we receive grace to be obedient to you father we thank you we thank you for this grace we thank you for a renewed mind we thank you for boldness the grace to do father we thank you for it in jesus name pray amen Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor B3. God bless you, everyone. Remember, the next watch is by nine. There's the worship watch by 12. Another amazing watch by three. There's another one by six. 9 p.m. is Bible study and prayer. We have the watch by 12, three, and we're back again by 6 a.m. I'm really excited about this week. I'm excited because God is speaking about our wealth and our finances. That's because he's bringing something. So he wants us to be ready to receive it. The Lord strengthen us. God bless you, Pastor B. So it's always a delight. I love you so much.